in different religions you have different ways of calling people to come to prayer for example the jews they use the trumpet as it's mentioned in the bible in the book of numbers chapter number 10 verses 1 to 3 lord spake to moses and told him to make two trumpets of silver and to use it to call the assembly the christians they use the church bell some tribes they use the drum in islam we use the human voice and the call for prayer is called as adhan and the person who gives the adhan is called a muaddin the human voice is much more melodious and soothing as compared to the trumpet bell or drum and there is a much better impact on the human being there are many non muslims who have reverted to islam only by hearing the adhan they were so impressed with the melodious adhan which had a tremendous effect on their heart mind and soul that they accepted islam but unfortunately all the adhan that we have in bombay they aren't as melodious as they should be and they cause more inconvenience to the human beings than tranquility therefore i request all the muaddin that they should hear the adhan of the harmain sharif masjid nabi in madina and masjid e haram in makkah as an example of what a adhan should be like besides the adhan being melodious and soothing it also carries a message but unfortunately most of the non muslims they do not know what the message of the adhan is last december i had been to kerala to attend a conference organized by the muslims in which they also invited a non muslim minister who was giving a talk on the stage and he was speaking a few good words about the muslims and about islam and he said that we indians we are very proud of the muslims we are proud of the mogul rulers the amount of monumental buildings they made the beautiful structures they made no wonder you muslims you praise emperor akbar five times a day it may sound like a joke but it's very common that many non muslims think especially of india that we praise emperor akbar in the adhan and in our salah there are some non muslims who are impressed by the western movies which very often show the actor dressed up in a arab garb who's a villain who's a terrorist and before he draws out his sword he says allahu akbar so non muslims think that allahu akbar is a war cry which the muslims give before killing the non muslims it is the duty of every muslim to clarify these misconceptions from the minds of the non muslims and we should give the message of adhan tell them the translation of the adhan that when we give the adhan and when we recite allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar it doesn't mean that we are praising emperor akbar or it's a war cry but it means allah subhanahu wa taala is the greatest almighty god is the greatest allah is the greatest allah is the greatest ashhadu allah ilaha illallah i bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but allah subhanahu wa taala i bear witness that there is no deity but allah ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah i bear witness that muhammad peace be upon him is the messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala i bear witness that muhammad peace be upon him is the messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala 
حي علی صلاح حی علی صلاح کم فو صلاح کم فو صلاح اور کم ٹو پریئر کم ٹو پریئر حی علی فلاح حی علی فلاح کم ٹو سکسس کم ٹو سکسس اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ از دی گریٹس اللہ از دی گریٹس لا الہ الا اللہ دیر از نو گاڈ بٹ اللہ وی ہیو ٹو ایکسپلین دی میننگ آف دی آدان ٹو دی نان مسلمس It is the duty of the Muslims that we deliver the message of Islam and explain about it to the non-Muslims. And before we offer Salah, we always have to do ablution. That is, we have to wash ourselves. That is, we have to do wudu. This is mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5. Verse number six, that Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, O you who believe, when you prepare yourself for salah, wash your face and your hands and arms up to the elbow. Rub your head with water and wash your feet up to the ankle. It's compulsory that every Muslim should do ablution. should do wudu before we offer our salah. And a similar message is given in the Holy Bible, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 40, verse number 31 and 32, that Moses and Aaron and their sons washed their hands and feet thereat. And they entered the temple of the congregation. And when they approached the altar, they washed as was commanded by the Lord to Moses. A similar message is given in Acts chapter number 21, verse number 26. And Paul took the men away. And the next day, along with them, he purified himself and entered the temple. We Muslims, we do ablution. We wash ourselves. We do the wudu. Before we offer the salah, to keep ourselves clean. We are hygienic people. And besides keeping ourselves clean, the wudu is also a sort of psychological preparation, a mental preparation that we do before we communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Salah, chapter number 56, hadith number 429, that the earth is made as a place for me and my followers to do sujood, as a masjid. Masjid means a place to do sujood. Our prophet said that the whole world, the complete earth is a masjid for the believers. But natural, the place where you offer your salah, where you do sujood, it should be clean. It's also mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Adan, chapter 75, hadith number 692, and ask me Allah be pleased with him. He said, that the companions, when they stood for salah, his shoulder touched with the shoulder of his companion, and his foot touched with the foot of his companion. A similar message repeated in the book of Salah in Abu Dawood in chapter number 245, hadith number 666. The beloved prophet, before starting the Salah, he said, straighten your rows, stand shoulder to shoulder, close in the gaps, and do not leave any opening for the devil. The Prophet was not referring to the devil which you see in the Onida TV ad on the comic strip with two horns and a tail. The Prophet was referring to the devil of racism, of caste, of color, of wealth, irrespective whether black or white, whether rich or poor, whether king or pauper, to whichever family you may belong. When you stand for Salah, stand shoulder to shoulder. 
the basic method, the outline of offering salah is given in a nutshell in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says, 